I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'd like to welcome you to this video where we're going to take a look at troubleshooting, if troubleshooting is absolutely necessary here, with a frame relay and RIP configuration. Router 1 is our hub, and we have two spokes, routers 2 and 3. And right now, let me show you what we've got as far as our config goes. We have a loopback on each, in, on each router where the router number is each octet, 11112222, and so forth. On serial 0, we've put the IP address 172.12.123.0 slash 24, that's the network we're using, and the last octet will be the router number. So I've got a couple frame map commands in there, got encapsulation frame relay, of course. Here's our RIP configuration on each particular router and we've got version 2, so we've hard-coded that. We have the serial interface network, we have the loopback network, and we have no auto summary. So right now let's take a look at show frame map. And so far that looks good. You always want to look for active. That's what we're looking for and we see it there. So let's try pinging those two addresses. That's router 2 serial interface, that looks good. And we'll ping router 3's as well, and that looks good. So we'll go down to router 2, take a quick look around. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like. And there's our loopback address that I've put on here. And the serial interface is going to look much the same, a couple logging commands there. But we've got a couple of frame map statements that look good, the IP address looks fine. It's a spoke, so we're going to use the same Delsey for multiple IP destinations. And here is our RIP configuration. So it looks good so far. Let's do a show frame map. Got some activity there. 172.12.123.1. It's router 1. Looks good. Router 3. That looks good. So, so far our IP connectivity is looking good. And we've got the loopback address here on router 3. Here is the serial interface. And we've got our RIP configuration here. So everything's looking good so far. So a show frame map on router 3. We'll ping router 1 and then router 2. Everything looks good. So do we have anything to troubleshoot here? Did you see an issue anywhere when we were looking at the configuration, something that might cause a little bit of trouble? Let's see. We have the loopbacks on each interface advertised by RIP. So let's take a look at the routing table on router 1. And you see the directly connected networks, but we don't see the RIP routes. We don't see the loopbacks on the other routers. Now you can look at the entire routing table with show IP route. What I like to do as the tables get more complex, and this one obviously hasn't gotten complex yet, but you should know that you could put a qualifier, if you will, at the end of show IP route. That is, if you want to see only the RIP discovered routes, you just run show IP route RIP. And when you run a show command on a Cisco router and it shows you that blank space and then goes back to the prompt, that means there's nothing to show you. So what's the problem? You might have spotted it when we looked at the config, but let's run debug IP rep. And I want to tell you right now, when you're working in a lab environment, debugs are your best friend and they are a tremendous learning tool, even when things are going right. Because you have to know what things look like when they're running correctly to know how to handle it when they're not running correctly. Of course, in a production environment, in a work environment, you never use a debug unless you're sure of the result because they can overwhelm the routers. So let's take a look at debug IP rep. And I'm going to run a little command called clear IP route asterisk, which forces the dynamic routing protocol to go ahead and send updates and hopefully receive them. And I'll go ahead and do an undebug all here in a moment. So we see a lot of sending going on, and we expect to see them sent to 224.009, right? Because we're running rep version 2. We're ignoring some packets, but that's because they're sourced from one of our addresses, the loopback address. Uh, the problem is I don't see any receiving going on there. Now, we don't have a connectivity issue because I was able to ping. But what is the issue? 
We have to know how to spot these things. One thing you want to watch out for with frame relay is there's an option called broadcast that can go on the end of a frame relay map statement. Now it doesn't have to because I was able to configure this without broadcast and sometimes when we get in a little bit of a hurry people leave that option off. But what happens if you leave broadcast off is that unicast traffic will have no problem being transported. You saw when we sent the pings we had no problem at all. But the problem right now is RIP updates can't go across the frame because they are multicast. So no broadcast and no multicast traffic is going to be able to go across the frame until we write frame map statements that have the word broadcast at the end. So I'm just going to quickly rewrite those. And I'll use um, iOS help here at the end to illustrate a couple of options here. And notice broadcast is the top one. Of course, they're in alphabetical order on the left-hand side. Broadcast should be forwarded to this address. And then I'm just going to use my up arrow to go in here and change that. And that's that. I did it to three. Okay, let's go back and see. I see what I did. We'll go back to router one. Did you see what I did incorrectly? It said address already in map. I needed to use Delsey 123 for that 123.31. So we'll fix that real quick. I don't like about Cisco routers. Most of the time when you do something wrong, you're going to find out about it pretty quick. We'll go ahead and put one here for consistency's sake to the other spoke, even though we know that broadcast can't go from spoke to spoke. Right, because routers cannot forward broadcasts. So let's go back up to router one now. We just put those frame maps there, so let's see if we see anything here. And we already see that. We already see the RIP updates that have come from the other routers. I didn't have to do an update. Isn't that great? Because you just left that one little teeny word off, frame map statement. And that happens every once in a while in production networks. I wouldn't be surprised to see it rear its ugly head on your exam one way or another, even if you're doing a live lab one day. Um, that broadcast option, like I said, it's a little puzzling because you can have frame relay working and you put it into place and say, hey, I got my pings working. And then when you go to another part of the lab and you put RIP or OSPF or EIGRP on top of it, so to speak, it doesn't work correctly. And the reason it doesn't work correctly is not your layer 3 config. There was nothing wrong with that. The problem was actually the layer 2 config, the frame map statement, was missing those broadcast state options at the end. That concludes this particular video. There are other issues that might pop up with a configuration like this. Uh, the YouTube time limit of 10 minutes is going to constrain me here. So I'm going to stop this one here. Very shortly I'll have another video with the frame map configuration just like the one we're working with here. And we'll look at other options or other issues that may pop up. I also invite you to come out to www.thebryantadvantage.com. You can go straight to the, to the tutorials page. If you like, it's a lot easier to go to than it is to say. I've got over 250 free Cisco tutorials out there in video form, practice exams, fully illustrated tutorials, a lot of great stuff. So come on out and see me at the website. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I will see you there.